Welcome back to the Implausible Podcast, episode two. I'm here with Zevi, yeah. Benny B. Wallen, and <laughs> Brevis Brothers or Brothers. Tarquan. Tarquan. We here with Tarquan today. Um, today we're going to talk about clutch players, clutch moments, and what it actually means to be clutch. Um, so who would like to start us off with this topic? All right, then. I guess I'll start this up. So I think when it comes to this topic of who's clutch, I think people try and narrow it down to, like, because when people, when you think of a game-winning jump shot, like, most people picture it as, like, that isolation at the top, you know, someone dribbling and then pulling up for a jump shot to win the game. When there's more to being clutch than that. So what's your, what's your thoughts on that? Mm, that's actually a... A good point, because you could be clutch with the game winning block. You could be clutch with the game winning steal. That's actually a good point. I didn't think about it until you just said that. Um, because when I think of clutch, like like you said, I do think about um, a couple of seconds left on the shot clock or the game clock, pull up and somebody mid and drain a three or a mid range. I never think, or like a even the game layup. Never really think about like the defensive end of being clutch. Hey, uh, do you think coaches deserve credit for clutch points? Do you think like if they was you said who? Coaches. Yes. Coaches. Oh, for yeah, the yeah, like if they drew up a play. Yes. Absolutely. You know, just just. I'm just plugging my boy, you know, Brad Stevens. I know you were saying. Listen, I've seen many Spurs game winners. They saw him play Greg Popovich drawing up. So you already know. Exactly, exactly. Y'all not going to talk about Mark Jackson? Man, Mark Jackson. I feel like, I feel like Mark Jackson is a, is a very clutch coach. With his times in Golden State. When is the last time you seen Mark Jackson coach? <laughs> in Golden State, <laughs> he be, I'm gonna say he, he need he need a culture job back, man. He be with Jeff Van Gundy on the side, my man. You know? <laughs> wow, you don't like you sound you don't you don't like him, Zach. I mean, Pat Quan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think he is a good coach. I just you know, I don't know. I mean, it changed up his philosophies a little bit, but he is a good coach. He my opinion, he deserves a lot of the credit for what the Warriors are. Definitely, definitely. What's your thoughts, speaking, Aaron? Speaking of ben, uh, Benny B. Wallen, I'm, 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 I'm. Y'all not gonna like it. This is how I feel. I'm not changing it for anything. I think if you're down one point and there's a few seconds left, it don't gotta be an isolation, but the person that gets you the win is clutch. I don't care about it. Damn pass. I don't care about the play drawn out. Nobody gives a damn about that, all right? You give the ball to the superstar to end the game. Nobody cares about no pass, no damn game saving block. You give the ball to somebody, give them a screen or no screen, go to the bucket, step back, whatever you need to do, and win the game. That's what matters. Because at the end of the day, you know what shows up? Not passing, not game saving blocks, the win. That's what matters, winning the game. Actually, you know how you got to win the game? Yeah, sure. By scoring. Let me, let me ask you a question about that then, Aaron. So, one of your favorite players is Michael Jordan, correct? Yes. So, when Michael Jordan made the pass to Steve Kerr, that wasn't clutch? You're naming like, <laughs> one instance. When any other instance, it was a shot by him. I got, wait, I got a question. So, one of your other favorite players. Yes. Hold on, we're still on Michael Jordan. You need to stop. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, stop. go ahead. You said Michael ahead. Jordan. Now, if I want to be honest, the pass wasn't clutch. The shot was clutch. Because at the end of the day, if you pass the person the ball and the person misses the shot, 
then the task meant nothing. Right? If they ain't make the shot, it don't really matter. You gotta you, the point of being clutch is to win the yeah, game. What is what if passing it to the about, oh damn one of the passing it to the open man no, be, be the better choice than trying to lay up over two three. And if he misses, it, Ben's gonna be like, oh well, my the super the superstar, you know, it wasn't my fault. I gave it to the he was supposed to make the shot. But if you didn't pass it correctly, let's say you Score pass it down. low, then he got to the catch the ball. That made the shot. This guy. Huh? Say, what if you pass Wait, the ball, what right? What if you pass the ball and it wasn't a good pass, or so he had to, like, get it from his feet, and then he had to lift it up? All that time it took for him to bring it all the way down to up takes seconds off the clock. So the pass do matter as well. It got to be a pinpoint pass. Okay, so it has to be an accurate pass, but the literally, even if it's an accurate pass, if that player does not make the shot, the whole thing is meaningless. Versus when you get the ball, when you when you take the ball down, you know what you're supposed to do. You put the hand to the clock. You run whatever, run the timeout, or you go for the bucket. Making that shot is really what the, determines the clutch factor to me. Making that shot is what matters. The, pa the pass can be good, it can be bad, but if the person misses the shot, it's like it was a wasted opportunity. So, so to me, the only so you're saying the only clutch. You don't care about pass or. The I didn't say clutch low. play. I did not say clutch play. I said clutch moments. I never said clutch play. Alright, so so in the 2017 playoffs when Mahu got James Harden, that's not a clutch moment. <laughs> There's no guarantee it would have made that shot. First of all, that's number one. Mills and Gordon and picked up, and that was a good call because the position helps Anderson. Here's Harden. Ginobili's on him. He's got oh shot. Number two, number two, <laughs> it looked like he was trying to get the foul more than make the shot. You saw the motion that he did. If you try to make the shot, you're not, you're not going to get to an open spot and make the shot. There were people, in, there were people closing out to him and there was somebody right behind him. You should be aware of the, the whole court as a guard or point guard. So the fact that you didn't know that this old behind Bone riding to know he was behind you. <laughs> Half the pass out, and you flock and try to get the foul in the playoff game. You know, it's a bad moment by James Harden. Since you want, since you, all right, because everybody wants to pick on James Harden. But I'm pretty sure he learned from that, and he's never had his shot blocked like that in the playoffs again. I hope. <laughs> Until a year later. <laughs> um. All right. So I got a question for you then. So since you're talking about um. The only thing that matters is the shot, right? And with the game coming down, who would you have out of all every every player that you you have knowledge about? Who do you have taken that clutch shot? Michael Jordan. That's okay. That's a good choice. Good choice. Good choice. But why? What's what's your reason? One, one. He's known for ending games with the game on the shot. I'm not saying he's done it every time. Why? Why do you change his name? I don't. I'm calling you. What the name that you said? What was it? Rwanda? Katwanda? What, what was the name? Taekwon. 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 You said Prince Taekwon. Listen, listen, listen. listen. <laughs> That's not the point. Michael Jordan is known for being clutch and hitting the game when the shots and ending the game. Because he doesn't have a fear of missing it. You got to have that player that's not like, you know what, I'm going to put the responsibility on somebody else. The superstar, the super, the re is when the team needs him most to do something positive with the ball, which more likely is shooting than passing. You want to give it to that superstar player. Now, with that being said, I'm not knocking LeBron for passing it. That's his style of play. But I I prefer to make the shot. And 
Michael Jordan is the most known and the most clutch for doing that. Wouldn't you prefer the superstar on the court? Wouldn't you prefer the, what you the superstar to make the right choices? What you call that? The coach on the floor? I think there's a term for that. I don't, I don't... Floor general? The coach on the floor is usually the point guard. By the way. Usually, yeah, but the superstar is either, either the point guard or the person who has the ball in their hands. The, the captain? No. Right. Yeah, well. The captain. That, okay. Okay. Because you can have coaches, you can have leaders, you can have captains. There, there's, like, there's a difference between all three of those. But in my, in my opinion, if you know you can't make the shot, if you know you can't, you can't end the game that way, then it's okay to pass it. But if you know that you can make that shot at any moment, any time, and you're not afraid to do it, and if you miss, you take that full weight. That's all I'm saying. If you miss, you take the full weight. Don't pass up and say, oh, um, we didn't execute as a team down in the clutch. Um, I, 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 I made the play to the open man, and he missed the shot, so it's not my fault. Like, I hate that. Like, if you if you miss the shot, you take full responsibility. If you make the shot, I mean, you go. That's me. Say, say, say I'm the game, we down one, you feel me? I'm driving right. to the basket, you know, I, I blew by my man, so driving to the basket, and my teammate is in the corner, so this man comes to help me, right? So this man is like seven foot, I'm like six foot, you feel me? So I know if I try and shoot this over him, it's probably going to get blocked, you feel me? Probably, probably. I'm a 99, so you know I might get a little cheese, you know, a little, a little, a little sign. But say, okay. say I decide to pass okay. it to my man in the corner, right? Smart choice with, instead of taking it over a seven foot. I don't second, have giant slay. With one so I second. pass it to the man in the corner. He shoots it, right? Once I pass it, is it? It technically is not my fault. I made the right play. Technically, it's not my fault. He's open for you, three. You have me? one or second. Or two, mid range two. You just you said, said what? You just said you have one second. I don't think you're gonna be able to get that pass. I didn't say one second. You did say one second. Huh? Well, I don't. If I did, then I take it back. I don't. I'm dry. I said you was up. You was down one. Oh, you was down one. How many seconds yeah. is on the clock? Enough to get the shot off. <laughs> say, say we got a full shot clock. Full shot. Twenty four. No, no, no. Say twelve seconds. Twelve seconds. By the time I drive. Twelve seconds. Yeah. By the time I drive. All that, all that to get past my man and drop. Say seven seconds got off the clock. So mm-hmm. I'm, now I pass it. You to have the five guy. seconds now, right? Yeah. I mean, that's enough so time. So that's you tell me five seconds isn't enough time to maneuver for a layup or a floater. There's multiple shots you can take. You don't have. Yeah, but to why, pass why do all that maneuvering when I could just pass it to the open man? It doesn't have to be all this. You can literally just be like that or take the contact and make it. Depends on what type of player you are. You said you're a 99, so you should have those abilities, right? Yeah, but, but he said he doesn't smart have plays. Okay, so smart plays, smart plays. Aaron, I have a question for you. Okay. Now you think you, you, I'm pretty. You consider yourself a shooter, right? Absolutely. No question. Okay. So say for example, Malik is driving to the basket, and you're wide open. Instead of instead of Malik passing it to you, he tries to shoot it over the over the. Whoever Which the, Malik are we talking about? Whoever the big man. It doesn't matter in this case. Whoever the big man is, he tries to shoot it over the big man. What is your first? What is your first reaction going to be if he misses it? Here's the first problem. If I'm on that team, he wouldn't have the ball. So that's number one. <laughs> <laughs> you should know. <laughs> you don't know. I would have the ball during that time. But if he took that shot and he missed it, it would be on him. I would be upset. But if you feel bold to take the shot and you make it, then good like. That's, that's, that's my point. Your first reaction is not going to be. It should be everybody's point. I'm saying I would prefer somebody who's willing to end the game that way than, than give it to somebody else. I'm asking you, your, your honest reaction if that happened, your first reaction would be, oh, that's his fault. Your first reaction would be, why didn't you pass me the ball? My first reaction is, why the hell did he have the ball before driving the basket? Give him the ball and then give me the ball. You know that. That's number one. But 
if I want to, if I want to be completely honest, if I want to be completely honest, I will be upset he ain't passing the ball. But you take that responsibility by taking that shot. That's what I'm saying. If you if you feel like you're that type of player, or you've been proven to be that type of player, proven to be that type of player, then you yeah, do but that. Master- Basketball is a team sport, man. Use the team to your advantage. But if I see my man's open in the corner, I'm gonna pass it to my man. You know what I mean? If he, if hopefully he make it. But if he miss, then then next time I probably won't pass it. But this, no, no, no. I'm still probably passing it. But still, the the point. I have a question for you. It's a game. It's a game seven yeah. in the finals. You have the ball. You're the superstar. You're telling me you're passing that moment up. This could really boost your legacy. You're going to pass the ball and give it to somebody else. If I had to choose between shooting over two defenders, who said you had to shoot No, we're using the same scenario. Same scenario. If I had to choose between okay. shooting over two defenders or giving it to the open guy in the corner, yeah, because the goal is to win. I don't care about the highlight the highlight dunk or the highlight layup. I, if I end the if I end the game with a ring on my finger, I'm good. I'm Gucci. You know I mean? That's how I see it. To yeah. me, that's clutch. Making the right play is clutch. The shot is is the shot is for all the heroics and you know, or you get all the girls and all, all that. But making the right play. I'll, all right, all right, all right. Let's, let's get back on the original question. This man, ba- this man, Aaron Basketball IQ just. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Back to the back to the original question. All right, so I guess I I answer. It. So for me, if I had to pick one player to take my take the shot, I would probably choose Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk. Why? Because for one, outside the fact I witnessed Dirk kill my team in this same situ- situation, I've also also Dirk Nowitzki is. Hey, seven- the the viewers don't know what's your team. What's your team though? The San Antonio Spurs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I said, I, I would you I because Dirk is tall enough he can get a shot off over any defender, and most and if and if the, let's say hypothetically he's facing uh, a person who could potentially block his shot no matter how likely that that is not to happen, he can still get by them and get to the basket. Or over small person. That's that's barbecue chicken a Shaq would say. It don't matter in any situation. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, you, hear, you hear that, Malik? It doesn't matter what defender is if you have a, a direct superstar. I'm not saying every superstar can do that. I'm just saying that's my, that was my point. But go ahead, sir. In the scenario of Dirk, that 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 logic does not apply to other players and to all other players. Aaron. That's what I said. I said you have the. Right, I didn't say every superstar should do that. I'm saying the superstar, if you're known for that. Which means size, whatever, buckets, whatever you want to call it. Whatever, whatever, finesse, whatever, whatever. The player that will not miss that shot no matter what, no matter what time it is. Because they view that shot as every other shot they take. They feel like they won't make it. That's my point. And now to finish my second ball. Also, Dirk Nowitzki can pass if he gets, like, triple team. Because it's going to take the triple to stop that man from getting the shot off. So. The man Dirk with the fadeaway money. It's a good choice. You know, you know, I you know how I feel about Dirk Nowinski, one of my favorite players of all time. It's a good choice, good choice, good choice. Alright, so so Benny Benny picks Jordan. Paul Kwan with Dirk. How about you? Ah, Oh, um, he just said Dirk. No, no, no. I I agree with him, but I mean, I don't think that would be my choice. Um, Dirk is a very clutch player. I agree with him. Um, oh, I see where this is going. No, I'm not going in that direction. <laughs> I see where this is going. No, as much as I want to say who I'm about to say, I'm not going to say it because that is not the choice I was thinking about. The viewers don't know who you about to say. I'm not saying Carmelo Anthony, all right? Carmelo Anthony, I will give it to him if it's like the go ahead bucket. I need more time. But if there's like a substantial amount of like, like I said, I knew you were going to say. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like if there was if there was like 42 seconds on the clock on the shot clock, I'll give it to Melo with the go ahead bucket over everything. 
But if mm-hmm. we talking about clutch, like seven seconds, ten seconds, mm-hmm. that type, I'm gonna have to pick the Slim Reaper of KD. <laughs> yes. KD, KD, I feel like has, has hit it's a nice. lot of somebody objects. Right? Wow. <laughs> since when? Since since. Why you like KD, bro? I don't like, I mean, I have no hatred towards KD, and he's not one of my favorite players, but he is very clutch. And one of the most clutch moments I've watched that KD I hit. Say, we know the real reason you're picking KD. What's the real reason? Because his two most notable clutch shots happen over the player you hate the most. <laughs> first of all. The viewers don't know which player you hate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even, bro, that's not even the shot I was even talking about. See, y'all gotta let me explain. I picked KD because one of the most notable shots that I remember him taking was, I forgot what game it was, but it was in the playoffs against the Memphis Grizzlies. You see? From the left side of the corner, if I'm correct. correct that's the one that went to like seven games, right? Seven, yeah, like, I, I believe so. Yeah. He hit the fadeaway Three point jump shot while getting fouled. I know, I know. While exactly while getting fouled. <laughs> Memphis has had an answer all night. A quick six all run. Allen got a piece of that one. Almost out of bounds. Somehow Durant lets it go. Oh! Like, come on, that that. First of all, he was not trying to square up and get that. He just threw it. He got hit and decided to just throw it up and have clutch. It, it was clutch, and I remember it. I don't that, remember. That was luck. Was it over? Who was it over? Was it Marcus Sol? Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, I think it was Marcus Sol. But that guy, hey, yo, let me just throw it up. That there. man said. <laughs> that 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 was a really clutch moment, a very iconic clutch moment that I remember. So that's why I would choose. Kevin Durant. He said a whole bunch of other ones that I believe I can remember. I know he hit one. In the Mavericks. I think so. I think it was. I think it was over Monte too. That's a sad. Point. He hit a couple on on Dallas. But uh, I pick KD. He's he's basically he's basically like Dirk. He got the same arsenal and everything, and he copied Dirk's fadeaway. So I pick. I mean, KD. a lot of people have so. All right, but KD, KD kind of pretty much perfected it. So did LeBron. No, 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 no. no. All right, so Zebby, who are you picking? Uh, oh, Kyrie. God. No, 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 no. I want to say, you know, my boy, the best player of all time, Paul Pierce. Uh, I will honestly pick Joe Johnson. I saw Joe. <laughs> Only because... Wow. Um, I used to, I used to watch him on the Hawks, but I used to hate him on the Hawks because you know Celtics, Boston, and all that. Him and him and uh, it was him, Al Horford, and Josh, Josh Smith. Josh Smith. Those three. I hated those three, though. But um, like Al Horford didn't to... become a Celtic. Oh yeah, that time he played Chris Paul too. I I mean I go talk about. But yeah, like when he when he came to the Nets. Uh, I I like I will come home from work and I just be one of the chillers and stuff for me. And I would turn on the game and <laughs> I would turn on the game and like I kid you not, like the three games I watched, it wasn't like back to back on the schedule, but it was back to back for me. Like I skipped like days. But the three games I watched, it was all close games and he hit a game winner. Or he was it was one game I went to OT. I forgot what the team it was. It was like a second OT. Or third OT or something like that. And oh, he just, I think I know what you're talking about, bro. Yeah, and every time the Nets was down, he would come up and hit some shot. Oh, some, some against layer. Chicago. Against Chicago in the playoffs. Yeah. I know, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> talking about. That, that, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, he don't want to go home. He, he, want, he wants to win this game. So he just kept hitting shot after shot. I, yeah, um, I, that, that yeah, I remember the game when he hit on, uh, I think it was Utah. Me and you was watching that. Uh, Malik in the where we was in uh school. School. Was he the Utah or the Clippers? It was some it West. Was just the, it was in, it was in LA, when he hit the floater at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gets it back. They got Ingles on him. Paul driving puts it up. It's good. Ties the game at 95. Utah has a timeout. Gets it across half court. Won't use the timeout. Five seconds left. Joe Johnson. 
with four. Johnson with two. Drives it. Puts it up. Gets the pass. And the game. And the Jazz win game one. I so jumped. Yeah, they don't like. I just happen to physically watch most of the game when it's that he hit. And I'm like, yo, like, this guy, like, he, he, he wants, like, yeah. So I would pick Joe Johnson. I so Joe. I so Joe. I should have picked I so Joe. <laughs> All right, so let me ask y'all a question. In this scenario, what type of player are you looking for? Like, what what type of what type of attributes are you looking for in a player like this? In this and and for this scenario, at the end of the game, with the ball in his hands. Overall, basketball IQ is the top thing that I would have to look for in these players. Oh, um, it don't matter. I don't. It don't matter if he got his shot on ninety nine and steady shooter on gold or Hall of Fame. At the end of the day, it all comes down to whether he makes the right play or not. If the shot is the right play, if the pass is the right play. That that basketball IQ is what I look for. Facts. I would agree. Basketball IQ. Benny? I already said my I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying that's my, basketball IQ matters. It, I'm not gonna say it does it doesn't matter. But in the scenario where you want to win the game and you have to win the game, if you can get that shot off if you can get the shot off you can get it off well, which I guess could be whatever the right play. If you can get that shot off at that point in time, then it's the right play to make. And if you make it, it's even better. I'm not changing yet. For a situation like this, I'm assuming we're going up to a stereotypical game winner. If we're looking like someone to isolate at the end of the game, I'm going to look for someone who's capable of creating their own shot off the dribble, but can also pass. Because especially if it's a great player, they're most likely not seeing one player at the end of the game. So I'm gonna need you to be able to to like throw a strike when when necessary to hit to hit your teammate where they be, might be open. So yeah. IQ is important as well as the ability to create your shot, own shot, and pass. So James Harden. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> you basically just described James Harden. He, 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 he described LeBron James. He's, no, I was just describing in general because Manu Ginobili does the exact same LeBron. thing. LeBron. I hold. Okay. Just um, this is completely off topic, but you know, since we in the season, I just want to make sure. I hope everybody, you know, being safe out there, stay clean, wash your hands, you know. All yeah, that, good shit from me. that good sanitizer. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Kill ninety nine point nine. What? Yo, you have to apply it twice. You have twice? to. Yeah, you have to I kill. Bet. You have to kill the point one that's left over, bro. Uh, uh you're gonna kill good germs too. <laughs> <laughs> you got no germs. Yeah, you got no germs. <laughs> Why can't have to break the soap? Lather your hands with soap and rinse it out with water. You don't need to use hand sanitizer every fifteen minutes. I'm, I'm, I fought Dr. Benny. No, I'm not a doctor. Now, Zach, you said Milo Ginobili does the exact same thing as James Harden? No, I'm saying he, cre- he can create his own shot. He can okay, pass. all right. I'm about to say. Okay, all right. I'm about to say. I mean, James Harden did copy a lot of aspects from this game. I'm not saying he didn't, but they don't okay, do the okay. same thing. Thanks, <laughs> Because you can say the same thing about Wade. Wade did the same thing as uh, Michael Jolie with the Euro, too. A lot of people did the Euro. Yeah, but James Harden abused it. I'm not going to say. Ginobili made it popular. Nobody said anything. Hold on, wait. Let me do my. I thought you were saying they have the same play style. It's like they don't. Their play style is similar. What? Yeah, they're similar, but it's not the, it's not the same. That's what it's you don't see Michael Ginobili ice away for like 10 minutes in, in uh, step back three. It's really just the Euro, the Euro stuff that's really similar. That's it. Mm-hmm. All right. Since since we feel like we okay. covered, I have uh, another question. How do y'all feel about not just last second? Because we've been talking about clutch in regards to the last, you know, 
that last possession. Like the scenario, like the last like ten seconds of the game or something. Like yeah. That. yeah. Right, what do you, what about clutchness in terms of performing well in big games? Okay, okay. say that one more time. That's hey. what I consider. That's what I consider. Hey, chill, chill, chill. Making the right play. Chill. I said say that one more time. Performing well in big games, like uh, you're a Boston fan, so I'm gonna bring up one of the most infamous things that's oh, happened yeah. in Boston. Come on, come on. Eight years ago, right? Boston, after taking a 3-2 lead for Miami, and LeBron James comes into your own house. Yo, you just had to bring this up. Right? <laughs> you just had to the man has went crazy <laughs> and dropped 45 on your team in his in y'all crib. Would you consider that a clutch performance? <laughs> Remember this face, Malik? Is it too late to exit this podcast? Or... <laughs> <laughs> but no, all jokes aside, nice as a side, I, I, I will say, uh, crazy. Aaron got victimized <laughs> by, by uh, a great small forward as well. Remember Kawhi from the corner? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the little four bounce. <laughs> That was literally the luckiest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> what ball bounces yeah. four times? What's that? Four What's times that? on the court? What did you do? Never, bro. Bro, that dude was like, you know what, Sixers? You try hard. We don't care. Let's get, let's get this to Kawhi. He doesn't have enough as he is. Bro, they get, bro. The rim was like, you know what? You can have my return. Like, what? What? I'm just going to bounce four times. Four times. Bro, at this point, I was like, yo, they're going to win the finals. After that happened, because, bro, the Sixers are going to win that final series if, if if they had gotten past gotten past the Raptors. Yes, they're beating the Bucks. I don't care what you say, Zach. They could beat the Bucks. They were not going to beat the Bucks. They were going to beat the Bucks, bro. They li- li- literally passed past those – past – oh, my gosh, I cannot pronounce the name. Past those Siakam and a few other Siakam? defenders were able – to slow Giannis down, bro. The Sixers definitely have way more than the Bucks did. They could definitely be, they could definitely have beat the Bucks. They had way more defenders than the Raptors did. I said they had way more. They had way more um size. They had much more size. They had way more shooters no. at that time. Shooters. The shooters. My fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. Not sh- Wait, man. They had, they had, they had a better defensive scheme. Let's put it that way. I'm not gonna say they had more shooting. They had a better defensive scheme than the Bucks. Bro, the only and they had, they had more length. The only shooter y'all had was JJ Reddick, and y'all um, lost him. We also don't we also had uh, don't say the, Tobias Harris. Harris. Tobias Harris can shoot. Tobias Bro, Harris can shoot. Average. I mean, my boy, my boy. Tobias Tobias Harris, TJ, TJ can shoot. Who? He was he was on that team that season, right, TJ? Yo, McConnell. Yeah. Yo, I met him in my store, yo. That's another yo, player that we can watch Melo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I should have <laughs> asked him about that, yo. I'll never be able to ask him again. But listen, I should have asked him about that game winner on Melo. I don't know why I didn't do that. But, but listen, yeah, we getting off topic for a little bit. You know I'm saying we we talking about what if something that never will happen thanks to the almighty Kawhi Leonard winning the championship next last week. Bro. Wait, if you wait, wait, if you want to come at people in their teams and you want to come at people in their players, let's not forget about Ray Allen hitting that three over y'all team. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. What do we do the next year? I mean, next we, year, we, y'all got it. Yeah, hey, yeah. you see what we did? We got revenge. Did any of your teams get revenge? Oh, all right, then. Well, <laughs> Melo, on the other hand, he got traded like four times since then. But, uh... <laughs> Yo, I'm tired of y'all in this mellow thing. It, 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 this is not going to be a reoccurring thing. In any event, when you talked, when you said, um, what was your question again? You said, uh, performing, well in big games, so. performing well in big games, I have to go with my man, Dane Tom, Logo Lillard, Dane No, Lillard. I'm asking, like, is that clutch to be, to have a great performance in a game like that? Oh, Down- Oh, oh yes, of course. I know one picking. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I know one picking. I know one picking. You know one picking. Twenty sixteen, Kyrie Irving. He deserved Finals MVP. I don't care, bro. This man made a layup off literally almost the top of the backboard over a Defensive Player of the Year multiple Yo, people, times. People keep saying that, like. Ankles. 
then took Curry out his ankles wait. multiple times. Wait, wait, wait. It's wait. the game winner on Curry. Multiple. Well, not multiple times. But he hit it on that <laughs> game seven. Gave LeBron his third ring. Gave LeBron his third ring and got himself his first. You cannot top that at all. All right, listen, listen, listen. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if I'm mistaken this with the year before, but didn't LeBron have the highest point average, rebounds, assists, steals, and, and blocks that series? Yes, or was that the year that. before? I don't yeah. care. I don't so, care. So, so I don't the care. fact that he was the best player on both teams. I don't and, care. Hey, you still want to get Kyrie the the game with the shot. Over that one shot. Wait, it's a good shot. It's a good shot. Wait, 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 wait. It wasn't it won the... oh, it wasn't just that shot. If you watch the game, if you see the performance he had in that in that game seven, bro, it was literally unmatched. And but LeBron's if... performance the Brown performance was better. He did yeah. he just he deserved Brown's MVP. For that statistical matter, but if you watch, if you watch the game and you watch what happened and you seen what Kyrie Irving did on his end, no, if if Kyrie Irving doesn't play that way, I'm not saying if he's not there. They both need each other for that ring. Let's not get that wrong. Probably more LeBron. But if you see the performance that he made, those shots were improbable and implausible. Subscribe. So you like. <laughs> I'm telling, like, the, what I like, I like the heart of the player, you know? I, I can't help it. I know numbers matter more than everybody else, but the heart so, of the player wait, wait. is, like, it means way more to me than anything. I have a real question. I have a real question. So, since you said the heart of the player mattered more, right? So, if we, going back, if we go back to the 2015 NBA Finals, right, do you think Iguodala deserved that Finals MVP then? Since statistics doesn't matter? Okay. Because That's because if I recall, no, I don't, I don't. Mm, but what happened because to the heart? Not, I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. I don't think he deserved it because that game should not have been six games. They they literally just had LeBron and Jarrett. Not even Jarrett. They they had they had LeBron. That game should not have been six games. Twenty twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. It should not have been six games. Why why do you? But he yeah. had it was just more than LeBron, bro. He had Kevin Love and. Kyrie was still there. No. Kevin Love and Kyrie were injured. It was just, it was literally just LeBron and the role play. Like, yeah, in, the, in that final. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were injured. That showed, that showed LeBron's real greatness, right? That showed LeBron's greatness to push that to six. What, what exactly does the series not supposed to go six games have to do with Iggy winning the finals? Are you saying LeBron should have won finals MVP? But they lost. The way he was playing, bro, yes. But they lost. They lost because they first of all they had more firepower, bro. They had more. They had all. They had all their players. They had literally had everybody. But when, and they and LeBron forced that game, forced it to be six games when it could. It should have been like four or five. Regardless of the four, fact, though. It could have been four or five. Regardless of the fact, though, that's that had nothing to do with the original argument. You said, and I quote, that the heart of the player matters more than the statistics. That's why you pick Kyrie over LeBron. So now I'm asking yes. you, now I'm asking you, did Iggy deserve that Finals MVP since he played with more heart? He had that block on LeBron, but Steph Curry was averaging like a calm what twenty five. Honestly, I think I think it was lower. He was kind of asked that um that series. I ain't gonna lie, from my memory. I don't know. Um, I don't know this. He was not. He was not. He was not trash. He was not kind of trash. He, Curry but he was. was he was. A, he was a Curry though. He, he would show Curry, up. But he was yeah. still good. <laughs> he was still good. I mean, that but, was his first year in the playoffs, in the finals. So. Yeah. If you're talking about, if you're talking about defensively, then based on that fact. I guess then yeah, I guess Eggy did deserve it. I, I changed my mind. I guess he did deserve it because he did play. He played, he played pretty good defense. And if Eggy, he's not, if he's not playing the defense he played on LeBron, I don't know how that series would, would be different. I wouldn't say hey, LeBron. That series would be different. So listen, man. Hey, man. Everybody brings up Kevin. They only bring up that shot he made and. That game, I don't know if it was game four or game five. It was game, it was, he dropped it was game, it was game five. He dropped yeah, so 
Those are yeah. Those are only two ins- instances that they bring up with Kyrie. That shot he made in Game Seven and his Game Five performance when he dropped forty one. You know I mean, which is cool. It's it's two very good performances. I'm not shooting him down. But LeBron played good the whole the whole series, the whole seven games. You know what I mean? So and, and first of all, if he didn't block Iggy in Game Seven, then Kyrie's shot wouldn't have met nine. You know what I mean? Uh, listen, it was eighty nine, eighty nine. There, there was, there was a decent amount of time left. And he gets that shot, they're up by two. Kyrie still, Kyrie gets that opportunity to ISO with Curry, and hits that shot, they're up by one. But they'll still have the lead. But that, that play call is not going to happen if they're down two. Yeah. Not in game seven of the finals. They're not going to take their chances open. Bro, they had Tyron. Tyron Lewis was the coach. Anything could have happened. Bro. <laughs> called that happen, bro. LeBron was Any the coach. LeBron ball. called the play to give the ball to Kyrie. That that, that does not happen if they're down. So LeBron, LeBron won't take the last shot, bro. I mean, we've seen him do it. I'm not saying he would take the last shot. I'm just saying the play call would be different. Please don't sit here and say you've never seen LeBron take the last shot before. Bro, I'm not saying never. Bro, this most this most legacy this most legacy saving shot was made by somebody else. Like what? Bro. Ray Allen, bro. Ray Allen gave this man a, a legacy. Ray Allen, bro. But see, if he had missed the, the, the initial shot, then Ray Allen wouldn't have made that for me. So he, he, he still has a shot. I told you it's, it, it, that, that's what I said, bro. I said the superstar is supposed to take that shot and make it. If you miss it, it's on you. But guess who made the shot? Somebody else. And that's why they get the credit for having the most clutch shot in the decade. But. Does so Ray Allen have one finals MVP over LeBron? Huh? Does Ray Allen have one finals MVP over LeBron? No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Because as y'all say, the numbers will get the whole whatever. I don't, whatever. I don't care about that. Whatever. But. Um. Based on your logic, Malik, yes, Iggy deserved that Finals MVP. And based on my logic, and Kyrie Irving did have those two games that were key to them winning, but LeBron played well. I just oh, wish he made a I would have wish he made a dunk on Draymond Green. I'm sorry, I wanted to see that so bad, bro. Yeah, that that would have been that would have been great. Too. Bad, bro. <laughs> there would be no mention of Draymond Green being the All Star. Ever again after that dunk. If you would have made that, if, if, bro, you see how, bro, you see how he caught this? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I just want to say something. Him, I just want to say something. Dunk, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, Slam just, that boy yeah, around. Yo, I just want to say something. Yeah. Um, since we're talking about clutch players, I also want to talk about non clutch players that are superstars. That is the name of Paul George, playoff P. Whatever you want to call him, I yo he, I he is not clutch, in my opinion, at all. I don't care what any of y'all viewers gotta say. I don't care what you gotta say. You or you, playoff P is garbage. Listen, listen, listen. Right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Zach. I have a question to that. Is talk is talk one? Talk one, okay? So go ahead. Talk, talk one. one. I, my apologies. What? I'll ignore the name at the bottom. Go ahead, Clark. What? When have you heard clutch conversation talk? When have I ever heard him? In the clutch conversation talk. With the exception of that commercial he made a couple years ago with him hitting the game winner. Because he was 0 for 15 at that one point. (laughs) So I don't know why that commercial even came out. But when, when have you ever heard him in the, like, I don't know where did the Paul George hate just come from. Like, it's... Well, you see, I there has been some conversations where Paul George is a very uh very clutch. Oh, no. Yeah, I've heard conversations that he's a very clutch player. Maybe not from reliable sources, but I've heard it. Then but I just I brought it up because I wanted to just state the fact that there are some superstars that are completely unclutch, and I just right, wanted to point out. a question. What's the uh, difference between just missing a game-winning shot and choking? 
Or missing a clutch shot and choking. Um, or being a choke artist, I should say. I wouldn't say he's... I don't know if he's a choke artist. But if the I'm difference... Saying, general, and, and I'm pretty sure you have players in your head you want to say are, ch- are choke artists. <laughs> I feel like the difference between unclutch and choke artist is a choke artist is someone who has like like he got like a wide open shot and he just misses or like there's a lot of things that he can do and he just misses a, a very unclutch player is like he's getting draped down with defense and he just misses the clutch shot or like that that's what I think. That's what I think of choke artist and unclutches. I'm saying like, what is the difference? All right then. Let's say for example, Michael Jordan is who Aaron said is clutch, but Michael Jordan's also missed game winners before. So what's the difference between that and just being a choke artist in general? Um, I would say a choke artist is someone who does who is, and like it's consistent because like. KD, you wouldn't consider KD a choke artist, but he definitely choked. Was it 2016? Against the Warriors. Yeah. 20, 20, uh, 20, yeah, 2016. Oh, when yeah. they blew the, when they yeah. blew the, the, the 3 the 1 lead. lead against the Warriors. Yeah, but there was, I forgot which game it was, but they was up. Don't double forget. Digits. Don't forget, they didn't have Kendrick Perkins. Remember, Kendrick Perkins said <laughs> if they had him, <laughs> they wouldn't have thrown that lead. <laughs> but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I just I yeah. had to break that up. It was up double. I think it was up double digits in the in the fourth. And he went like like zero for seven with like four turnovers in yeah, that quarter. Game six. Yeah, and and that he choked bad. Oh, he choked OD with that. Like if he made probably like one or two of the show, of those seven shots, he probably would have won that series. But he that's not consistent of him. So he choked that series, but. He wouldn't be a choke artist. I feel like a choke artist is someone that's like consistently. Consistent. So like a, huh? so like a consistent choke. Yeah. So like, first, like, like if you could drop Harden. forty points in the first three quarters, and then and can't do that in the fourth, you can't even drop five in the fourth. Then what are you doing, bro? Like so like James Harden. I know Harden. you probably tied or something, but y'all done? For y'all done? So like James Harden. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Y'all done? All right. It is so, First, first things first. Let's understand something. Let's understand something. Let's make something very clear. All right. Number one. If people have ailments, I don't stop saying that. Now, you know who's really not clutch, but people people don't really talk about it enough. But talk about people like Kyle Lowry, who has a ring, by the way. Kyle Lowry has a ring. Garbage. Yeah. How come? Kyle Lowry How come? Has a ring. How come he has a ring? Huh? How come he has a ring? <laughs> because he got 26 on step head. Wait, actually, the... can, can, I, can we all just make a list of uh five unclutch players or choke artists in this case? Because I already got two that's in my mind, which is Paul George and... Damn, I forgot the second one I was just about to say. Wow. Harrison Bonds. Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes, man. Yo! He was breaking up a storm in the... Yeah, man. Oh, I remember. DeMar DeRozan. That's who I wanted to bring up. I love my name, too, but that... that. Because DeMar DeRozan has been to the NBA Finals each and every time. When he was on the Raptors. Not each and every time, but consistently. And has never moved past that spot. Nah, they they just they just they just can't they just can't they just can't beat LeBron, honestly. Cause like every every series he played against LeBron, the series before that he averaged like twenty five. Bro, wait, wait, points. wait! Before you before you go before you go, I just want to say y'all acting like LeBron is unbeatable. There has been teams that were so close to beating him, but all had an issue. Like I want to point out, for instance, the Indiana Pacers with Victor Oladipo. They had that yeah. series in the bag, and what happened? LeBron happened. No, all the people, all the people got injured. Can I have a quick question in there? Go ahead. Now you say go ahead. 
Pacers with Oladipo, right? I mean, gave him a tr- uh, gave him a problem. Yes. All right, I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up an earlier Pacers team, the Paul George Pacers. You know, they both they both made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. You know, they pushed them to seven one year and then six the other couple. What do they all have in common? They lost. No problem. They lost, right? <laughs> <laughs> that 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 Pacer team definitely did uh, lose, but the one with Oladipo didn't they lose because Oladipo got injured? No, they lost because LeBron. No, Oladipo got injured. I promise you on everything. Oladipo didn't get. Hold on, before anybody say anything, this is out. This is all topic, but I need to clarify something from the last podcast. When I said I didn't like LeBron, let me just make this clear. When I said I didn't like LeBron. I'm talking about his media personality, the way the way he acts, the way he talks about players. When you talk about his play style and him taking contact, I respect and I like that. Let's just make that clear because I've done it before. I respect the body contact and make the. I just don't like his media personality and when he flops. That's that's it. Everything else, I'm cool with. Everybody flops. James Harden. Wait, James Harden flops, but James Harden is one of your favorite players. Huh? James Harden flops, and he's one of your favorite players. I don't players. like when he flops. But he's your I favorite like player. I like when he gets them shots, though. I'm not going to lie. That shot he hit over um Paul George and, and Beverly. Was it? Yeah, Broke Paul George. And... Yeah. <laughs> that, that, was, that, was some, that was some good. I messed with him. But, sorry, back to y'all. I'm sorry. Back to y'all. Hey, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> we got our still off topic. Yeah. Uh, we was talking about Paul George and the Pacers and LeBron and how nobody could get past them because of LeBron. Oh, yeah. We was, nah, Malik said, list your five. Your top five. Is like, hey, unclutch players. And you said Harrison yeah. Barnes. I said Paul George and DeRozan. So this is playoffs alone. I mean, I feel like it's just in general. Paul George in general is not a clutch player. Regular season or playoffs. DeRozan... As, mu- as much... DeRozan's been good in regular defend. season, bro. He's been good in regular season. This is playoffs. Yeah. Season, He's good in regular season. As much season. as I want to defend Paul George, like, I can't... I keep picturing have, when Tatum dropped him. There's no reference. You just keep... You keep picturing what? When Tatum dropped him <laughs> and made that, that beat. <laughs> to tie the game. <laughs> that boy Tatum. Yo. Yo. You ever seen a crossover or a dunk somebody on somebody so bad it gave you chills, bro? Like, nah, yeah, yeah. that one <laughs> gave you chills. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, hold on. I got I got a question now. Let, let, let's bring up a whole different topic. Well, not different topic, but same thing. So, I know we talked about, like, previous, like, players like Michael Jordan, you know, old players and, like, players that had already developed the clutch gene. So my question now is, who do you think uh, in the young age of NBA players is coming up to be one of a clutch player in their time? Other than, you know, the obviously answer, Luka the Don, Doncic. But that, that, um, he hasn't had a playoff series yet. He may not have had a playoff series yet, but he has proven that he's clutch in the regular season. That doesn't matter to the bell, bro. That's why I'm young talking about a certain player that I'm not going to mention right now. He need, I need a, I need to see him do that in a playoff series, too. If you don't do it in a playoff series, then it, you know. Listen, Mavs is going to the – Mavs is going to go to the conference final. Jason Tatum is on that. Yeah, bro. yeah. Jason Tatum is on that, John. He, he a killer, bro. He is a killer, man. I, oh, Thanks. man. You know, he learns from one of the best. Learn from the, one of the best, obviously. I feel like I feel like Trey Young, Trey Young is definitely gonna be up there. Once again, needs a playoff series, bro. He doesn't he needs need a playoff it. series. He don't need it. Yes, he does. Trey Young, yeah. Zach the Levine. Hasn't even had a winning season yet. Zach Levine. Nah. Once again, playoff Whoa. series. <laughs> he had that one game. I forgot who it was, but he he was like eleven. He hit like eleven threes or something. That, was that in the playoffs or was that a regular season? Not regular. Uh, it was in the regular season. Yeah. Yeah, but that I mean, besides that, I don't really see him 
It was against the Hornets. It was against the Hornets. Yeah. I'm about to say, as much as I usually almost never agree with Aaron or anything he says, I'm going I'm to agree with him. I need to Benny, see his name you is Benny. Really ain't ha- you really ain't had to do me like that. You could have at least said my name. You was going to talk You going to talk trash. His name is right there. But anyways, <laughs> as I don't, really don't agree with Benny, be wildin'. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I agree. I need to see these young players in the playoffs before I start saying they're clutch or unclutch. Because I, 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 certain players, like, I feel as though you can't, like, I, it's like, it's weird. Like, I don't want to say, like, I'm going to just take Zion, for example. I don't know off the top of my head what his free throw percentage is, but he gets in a playoff series and then, you know, misses a clutch free throw or something like that. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I'm, I'm, from what I heard, it's not. Let me, let me, let me look that up. Real quick. It's not good, bro. I like, I love Zion. I thought it was like in the seventies or something. No, no. Sixty-four. Zion in the seventies and the free throw. Sixty, sixty-four. You said 50, 54 or sixty-four. Sixty-four. All right, yeah. Like for example, Zion's not. Uh, you can tell by that he's not a good free throw shooter. So if he gets in a playoff series, I don't think like putting and he misses a clutch free throw. I don't think putting that like he's un like saying he's unclutch because he missed a, a free throw in a clutch moment. You know he's not a free throw shooter. I went. I'm not gonna say that makes him unclutch. He needs like, to put in ice in his veins. <laughs> put him on like silver. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing. If you're not a good free throw shooter, you're not a good free throw shooter. It don't matter yeah. what situation. It don't matter what situation you're in. Yeah. Like if you were Steph Curry, and, and you missed two free throws, and the game was on the line, then then then, then yes, you're, I, you're yeah. a chip artist. <laughs> I mean, LeBron has missed crucial free throws before. But, but he never in the playoffs. He never. He was never really a good free throw shooter. He was average. He's like a calm like 75 percent free throw shooter. Maybe that even eighty. That was his best. That's kind of bad for for a superstar, if you ask me. That's like that's like his only flaw, honestly. Like in terms of like what he does, everything else is is either average or above average. But his his feet throws for some weird reason is just doo doo. Can't shoot them. I don't know if he he, he don't got time to practice feet throws or something, but. Yeah, bro. I mean, if you can average twenty eight, eight and nine, then then I guess you know he's seventy three percent for his career. I mean, I'm not gonna say that's a good free throw shooter. I wouldn't knock him for missing free throws, although I know a lot of people would do that because you know yeah. it's LeBron. I just wanna hate on LeBron, but yeah, I'm not would be, they would be like, "Yo, he missed the he missed the free throw to, t- to tie the game, but he ended the game with fifty points." So I'm like, "Yo, like." Come on. <laughs> Monte was yeah. clutch. You said what? Monte. Monte Ellis. Yes, sir. Bucks Monte. Dallas Monte, Bucks Monte. It don't matter which Monte it is. As long as it's not the last year in Indiana. <laughs> clutch. 8.5 points. He should. He... I don't know why he never got picked up. Cause he's a small two guard. They're starting to like doing the down on the NBA. Man. I think that's really it. He's small two guard and he can't. His scoring was is still still good, but other than that, listen, man. I forgot I was gonna say. So you want to talk about the narrative now? The narrative of the player? The clutch players? Oh, man. Yeah. All right, what players do y'all think have a narrative for being unclutch or clutch that y'all feel is... James Harden has a narrative of being unclutch in the playoffs. And from what I've seen, from what I've seen in the past five, six, seven years, I can, I, I can see why, because the way... And I know, uh, oh my goodness, Tar- why, did, what, why, did, why did you choose that name? Why? 
But the point is, he he reminded me that like his numbers for like the closeout games don't really they, they're not really good, and the way he loses is, is so so memorably bad. And I have watched it as much as I like to watch in regular season. That's that's that problem that superstar stardom thing, man. I, I know. You Remember know. that uh, time they lost by 39 in Houston to the Spurs without Kawhi? Great games. Great memories. Sorry, I, I went down memory lane real quick. My fault. I'm sorry, bro. I didn't, I didn't get to hear you. You said that one more time? Yeah, what? Oh, you said when they... I, my fault. Let me speak a little louder. When yeah. they lost to San Antonio in Houston by 39 without Kawhi Leonard. 39? Dang. Yo, yeah. without, Ka- without Kawhi? I'm going to... Yeah. James Harden? I'm going to take... Can y'all let me finish my point? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm like... He's always been my favorite player because, like, he still does things that most players have never done in their life and never will achieve. I'll give him that. But, like, when it comes to playoff performances, he hasn't he hasn't really, like, showed up. And, like... He's had he's had decent teammates and he's had bad teammates, but like when it was time for him to do something, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like people say it's a curse. I don't know, but he just doesn't perform that well in in those times. Not he has a bad he has a bad he has a narrative of being a bad um playoff performer. But in the last maybe like maybe like one or the year before. He didn't play that bad in the playoffs. They just didn't. They just didn't win. Honestly, he didn't, like 2018 was not a really a bad year for him in the playoffs. They just didn't. They just didn't beat them. Wait, I got. I got in all honesty, I got something to say. Go ahead. Um, when we talking about the point of the narrative of like clutchness, um, I just have a quick question first. Do you believe that Russell Westbrook is clutch or not? It's just yes or no. 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 Yes. No. Yes. yes. Is that, and no. what about you, Tarquan? Say no. No? All right, no. see, that's, that's, all right, all right. So I just want to bring up that narrative that people usually do think that Russell Westbrook is not clutch. But I do want to bring up the fact, though, that when it was just him and Steven Adams, and I think they were fighting for the, they were fighting for a playoff position, and Russell Westbrook hit a clutch three to get them in playoff position. I think they were like the seventh seed or the sixth seed. Yeah. Something, some, some I, think, se- I think they ended that season with six seed. They were six. They were six yeah. seed? Right. Yeah. So I just want to say, like, I feel like Russell Westbrook is a very clutch player. Um, Some of the shots he take is very questionable. I'll say yeah. that. But Russell Westbrook doesn't really play with – he plays more with his heart and his attitude rather than his mind. That's Which, what, that, that, let me, I, wanted, I wanted to speak on that. I'm not going to say Russ is a choke artist. I think that's like, sort of like levels to that. I'm not going to say he's a choke artist. But as when we asked about Clutch earlier in the show, you said the most important thing is your IQ. Yeah. And when you see <laughs> Russ in crunch top moments, uh, he has made that's I, no, 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 again, no, no shame on that. I remember it was one time he dunked on, I don't know why we keep coming back to Houston, but uh, he dunked on. <laughs> Someone on the or is the Capella? Coach? Capella? Huh? Was it Capella? I, it was to win a game and that MVP season, and I, I was just thinking back to that. And he did have clutch moments, but then when you see it in the playoffs, sometimes like I don't know what happened in his head, but he just said, "Yo, yo, I'm not trusting my teammates ever again. I'm shooting them." <laughs> that playoff, he did that in that playoff series against the Jazz. Go ahead, Benny. So, let me clarify things, okay? Because this look make me look bad right now. So, when I said I like the heart of a player that know that what they're supposed to do, and they're capable of hitting that shot, Russell Westbrook is not capable of hitting that shot. That is Russell Westbrook <laughs> thinks he's capable of hitting that shot, but he's not. Yes, so he let me is. Clarify. Let me just yes, clarify he that. He thinks he is, but he's not. I love his heart. I love his heart. Don't get me wrong. He's a dog, and I respect him. I respect him with everything I have. But when it comes when it comes to taking the worst shots in the in the close situation, he's one of those players that should pass the ball. Okay, <laughs> he's he's Ew. one of those players that should give that give to somebody yeah. else. Bro. Wait, I don't like I don't like 
like this Westbrook slander. I'm not going to hold you. He needs to give the ball to somebody else in the class, bro. I'm not going to hold you. There was this one shot he took. There was this one shot he took in game three of the, uh, shit, what playoff was? It was against the Grizzlies. I think the score was like 95-91. And there was like three people open, bro. And on everything, he just dribbled up the court, threw it up. I think got fouled, too. And it just, like, luckily went in. I mean, I'm not going to hold you. Like I said before, he do take some questionable shots. But I feel like in the heat of the moment, when he makes it, like, it just makes the, the watching the game just so much better. I feel like I, I'm probably the only person that ever say this. I feel like Russell Westbrook is a good shooter. It's just his, his, his shot IQ is a little questionable. Feel me? <laughs> but yes, you know. what? <laughs> oh. remember, yeah, maybe he be killing it. He is a good, he's a good shooter from the mid. Three pointers, three pointers. He, he's average. He's average with three points. It's just his, no, his high IQ. His no. IQ drops it down. He just, he just, he don't pick the right times to shoot sometimes. But just cool because it's Russell Westbrook. He can do what he want. You know what I mean? No, he can't. Yeah, That's yes, why he's yeah, playing for the season now. What? He's playing better than Harden before the season ended. Because they had a whole center. <laughs> if they had a... No, they had to Yo. change the whole scale of the team. What bro. are you talking about? PJ Tucker? is a de- He's a good center, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. Bro, he just got posted around right by freaking... Uh, who, who was it? I forgot who it was. Somebody just... Bro, somebody just dumped on him off the... Bro, bro, like like the week, like the month, about two weeks to a month before they traded Capella, he was still doing better than Harden. Okay, let, let me let me make something clear to y'all. All right, Westbrook ha- Westbrook has good energy, and he's he's a paint driven. He has to drive to the paint to be effective most times to kick it out to shooters. So with a, a score that I saw a lot and doesn't move off ball, with a player that does also doesn't move off ball but drives. One of those numbers have to suffer. James Harden's taking that bullet, bro, for his friend, which makes bro, him the best player. James Harden. He's taking that bullet. He's taking that bullet for his bro. He like, averaged bro, 40 you, points I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the first two months of the- So the team can succeed. You're not actually better. I'm going to make you look good, bro. Go ahead, bro. Bro, go ahead and drive a dunk on these hoes, bro. I'm going to sit here and maybe, like, like, get 17, 20 points. 17, 20 points. You know, because that's his bad games, bro. Bro, he was averaging 40 for a good portion of the season. Uh-huh. James Harden was averaging 40 for a good portion of the season. Uh-huh. And and, and then and then, and then Westbrook's numbers were like 15 or something, right? No. It was like, like 20. Like 15. Yes, yes they were. It was, it was, was like 20. From a microscope, I know. He was nah, like it, was like, it was like 27 and 7, something like that. Like, he was aver- averaging close to a triple. But it was like low, the low points were low. It was like 20 or 19, like 19, 77, something like that. Something low. Probably lower than that. But, but yeah, Harden was averaging 40 for a, good, a 40 for a good portion of the season, bro. And then he just started missing shots. He was taking the same amount of shots and missing half. He had a game where he was like, what, what one foot for, for, what, 14 from three? That's a normal for James Harden. I don't know why I ain't like this thing. <laughs> the games like when you have two chucks on the same team, one of those chucks is going to suffer. James Harden, I said summer, suffer. James Harden is taking the bullet for his bro. You're like, you know what, bro? I'm going to let you take your high percentage shot. I'm going to continue to take my bad percentage shots. But you'll get more. You'll get more opportunity to score. Honestly, I feel just- like that I, from the moment Westbrook got traded to the Rockets, I knew that wasn't going to work out at all. At all. It's just like they... Like they're the same player in a sense, but like it's it's the amount of shots that they have to take in order to be efficient is beyond. Like James Harden will take up thirty two shots and make like eighteen of them. Just they, just it, it was better than what they had with Chris. Um, with Chris isn't Paul? that above fifty percent? Yeah. I mean, Wait, well. It is above fifty percent, but the point of the matter is that I'm saying like you had to take thirty two shots just to get that percentage above fifty. That's what I'm trying to say. 
Kobe. Other than Chris was a better fit, but Chris ain't never played. He played like like a third of the season. Chris's body was the reason why they lost, bro. That's yeah. really the only reason. If they, he was healthy, they, honestly, they I feel like they would have made it. They would have made it to the finals if he stayed healthy. Oh yeah, if he didn't they get injured. Won, bro. Yeah. I agree with you. That's Uncle they Paul. Won. It's his body, bro. He old. I mean, he old, old, but like. And nah, he can't, nah, nah, y- y'all can't say that now because the way the he's what not, he's no, doing no, right no. now with OKC, it was old, this last season. Like his body is fragile. That's just it. Well, he's just fragile. He's not. The thing with him in OKC now, I feel like is like he he doesn't. He's not doing much workload. Like he got Shea Gildas Alexander, and Delino got like all right in Houston. It was Harden, and he was the second option. And with the Thunder now, like he has the ability to be whatever option he wants to be. Bro, you know, you know damn well he's the first option. I mean, he <laughs> at, at the end of the day, yeah, but like he has more help on the Thunder than he did in Houston. In Houston, he only had James Harden. And, yeah, Eric Gordon. And no, Eric Gordon was he had shooters. What? He had shooters, and that was like they their job was to stay in one spot and to shoot. At okay. least in in the Thunder, yeah, like in the Thunder, they have. Hard. But in the Thunder, they have players that can operate and handle the ball other than him. And he has two players that can handle the ball, bro. Dennis Schroeder and Shea Gildas. Alexander. That's, All right, that's but, only two other players. But he has also Delino Gallinari to take off some of that workload as well. Bro, if you know Delino Gallinari, as soon as the playoffs hit, you're not going to see the same player that what? you see. You what? should know that. What? Bro, Delino Gallinari yes. was a good you know playoff performer. Gallinari, already, right? Gallinari was a good playoff performer. He's fragile too. That's what I'm saying, bro. He's You're not, not gonna see him. He's gonna get hurt again. He's not fragile. Bro, I don't think. I think bro. Delino Gallinari is fragile. He just had that one scary injury when he was on the Dallas map. Uh, Dallas when he was on the Denver Nuggets. And he's been getting hurt ever since, bro. Not really. He's fragile. He had a good consistency in uh with the Clippers. He got bro. The point yeah, of the matter that I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is what I'm trying to say is Chris Paul had to put more effort in Houston than he has to do in the with the OKC because in Houston not only did he have to play offensively but he also had to make up for the defensive woes of James Harden and his team. Oh my gosh. James Harden is literally the only player on that team that couldn't defend. He's literally he was literally the only one. Everybody else could defend. Go ahead, Zach. Go ahead, Zach. I mean, crap. Uh, <laughs> Chris Paul's usage rating is higher now than it was last year. So that means he's he's doing more now. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, but I don't know what's going on. Say that one more time. His usage is higher now than it was last year. He's playing alongside James Harden. Is so, that is I that mean, for the is that for usage? Does that count defensive as well? Usage rating is usage rate is what he does with the ball on the offensive end. Right, but what about the defensive end? I mean, he still got to play defense. Yeah, but it's not as heavy as it was in Houston. Oh, you're making up stuff, yo. That's, that's <laughs> like that's what I'm trying to like. He has help on the defensive end with the Thunder he than he does. Help. Bro, Houston, Houston had, had, I think that season, didn't they have Trevor Ariza and Clint Capella? Yes! So what is, what are and you talking And TJ Tucker, that's, that's three, and Aminu, that's four good defenders right there. Aminu? Aminu wasn't there. Yes! He was a good defender, yeah. Aminu was not there. Not, not on the, not, that season? On Houston? Yeah. Yes. Aminu was there? Yeah. Yes. Are you talking about Bob Mute? Oh, no, no, and no, Bob. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, my bad, my bad, my bad. I apologize. I'm about to Bob. say, Aminu? Bob, he hit him. He was on there. Yeah. Sorry. But, um, yeah, Chris Paul was just fragile, bro. I mean, hopefully it's different this year because I like what they're doing on the Thunder. But, nah, man, he... They had they had a good team. They just couldn't get along, bro. That's that's really it. And he kept getting hurt. But how long we been on, yo? Yo, yo, that's that's what we about to we about to close out yeah, right now. Go yeah, ahead, yeah. go ahead, Zevi. It's all you. Go ahead, Zevi. It's all you. Zevi. 
All right, so so we closing. So um, yeah, y'all put me on the spot. So yeah, so so this this is the conclusion of our our second episode, feel me, of the Plausible Podcast. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, follow all that all that good stuff. Subscribe. If y'all disagree or agree with us, you know, leave it in the comments. Put it in the comments. You know, let us know. We we we'll reply back. Probably add it to our next episode. Um. Also, subscribe to Benny B. Wallet. You know, I'm a, I'm a, since he don't want to plug himself, I'm gonna plug him. Pause. But yeah. And then um. Edit 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 out edit out. <laughs> edit out. <laughs> no, we leave it back there, bro. <laughs> All right, but yeah, I'm just I'm just stop right there. So yeah.